Tell me three people you'd like to fight next. Three people. Uh, went out of Kel Brook, Jason Vargas. Went out of Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. Uh, Danny Garcia. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing new media. Now, I had to cover this video as soon as I seen it. Shout out to whoever sent me this on Twitter, the link. So, IFL TV, make sure you guys check them out. And I'll put the link in the description to their video. Now, Eddie Hearn did an interview with them. And you want to fast forward to the eight minute mark where he talks about a potential fight with his fighter, Kell Brook and Earl Spence Jr. And like, I'm, I'm just going to break down what I see. Bottom line is Earl Spence Jr. is a real life threat to the welterweight division. You look at it and... I interviewed Amir Khan and also Andre Berto, and they had nothing but praise for Earl Spence. So that's one different type of welterweight. You know what I mean? People are just giving him praise and accolades. Then you got other people, like let's say the Danny Garcia, and they're kind of playing matchmaker, saying, oh, he has to do this, he has to fight this guy, or maybe in a couple years. Same thing with Keith Thurman. When, the, when Floyd Mayweather threw that out there and said, fight Earl Spence on my undercard. You want me fight Earl Spence first. And when that was proposed, Keith Thurman was saying all these things and steps. Oh, he has to fight a name. And I called out Floyd and didn't get the fight. So he's in the same boat as me. And now when it comes to Kell Brook, Earl Spence is very close to being the mandatory for Kell Brook. All he has to do is beat an undefeated fighter. And you guys know beating undefeated fighters isn't necessarily easy. But I, I broke down the interview with Eddie Hearn and I gotta side with the Earl Spence because the story just sounds fishy that Eddie Hearn spoke on and I've met Eddie Hearn and interviewed him real cool dude but fair is fair and if you go watch the interview he was basically saying that initially one of Heyman's guys was on the phone a couple of days after the Chris Algieri Spence win or after Spence beat Chris Algieri and according to him He's saying Heyman's guy was like, oh, we have to build up the fight. Spence isn't ready. And Eddie Hearn says he then took that to the media and said, hey, Earl Spence doesn't want to fight. He turned down the fight in some kind of interview because I remember seeing articles and stuff about it. And then he says 10 days later, the guy called back Heyman's counterpart, whoever it was, Sam Watson, or whoever this guy he was speaking with trying to negotiate a Kell Brook versus Earl Spence Jr. fight. He said 10 days later, the guy calls back and all of a sudden he's almost wrapped up the Jesse Vargas versus Kell Brook fight. And he says, the guy says, oh, I talked to Earl Spence. He said he wants to take it. But according to Eddie Hearn, they were already wrapping up the Vargas. Now, he also says in this interview, you guys got to pay attention to details. He also said in this particular interview that the Jesse Vargas fight is still not done. He says it's very close, but it's not finalized, meaning it's not a done deal signed on the dotted line. There's a lot of people who, and when it when it comes to negotiations, there's a lot of people who, who get offers and stuff. So if Team Brook really wanted the fight, they could have said, Jesse Vargas, that's a nice fight, but we want to go after this. His guy's really inching close to being a mandatory. We'll pay Panamarov some step aside money, but we want we want to we want an undefeated kid, unlike Jesse Vargas, who isn't undefeated, right? And who's kind of new to the welterweight division. If you look, I'd I'd have to look at his box rec, but I know he had the Timothy Bradley fight, the Saddam Ali fight, and he he fought for a vacant belt, so he is a champion, is a unification. But see, this is the thing with when it comes to unifications, and I'm not taking anything away from Jesse Vargas. Very good fighter. He's very tough. The Kell Brook Jesse Vargas fight isn't a bad fight, but you got to put it in perspective. And the perspective is this: this is all fact. This is not opinion. Oh, you go your bite. This is fact. Jesse Vargas doesn't have as many welterweight fights as Earl Spence Jr. I don't believe he has the same power. Look at the knockout ratios, right? And he's, he's newer to the division and he fought for a vacant title, right? He fought for a vacant belt. The belt that was made available because Bradley took a money fight with Manny Pacquiao for the third time. And he was stripped of his, his belt because he didn't defend against his mandatory Saddam Ali. So in turn, Saddam Ali and Jesse Vargas scrapped for it. And Jesse Vargas looked really good in that fight. And he beat Saddam Ali. But Saddam Ali, although he's a good fighter, he hadn't, he hadn't fought people at that level you know what I mean? he fought a bregu and he also fought uh francisco santana but i mean he was in there with a the vet like jesse vargas and vargas emerged victorious 
So my point being is this, there's still things that are unknown with how good Jesse Vargas is as a welterweight when you're when you're talking about full-fledged welterweight Kell Brook is a big welterweight Jesse Vargas fought for a vacant belt it's not like he went to a champion's backyard and beat a champion he beat an undefeated fighter so I give him props for that but he also again fought for a vacant belt which is a fact and he doesn't have that many welterweight fights he was it's not too long ago he was fighting guys like Josito Lopez and Khabib Alakverdiev at 140 right so that's my point he, he's still he's still not an established welterweight he beat the guy in front of him for vacant belt props and for me this is what i like to see i like to see someone's pedigree jesse vargas has a, a solid resume but i'm talking about at welterweight it, it doesn't matter once you start moving up in divisions i'm not gonna say it doesn't matter at all but it almost doesn't like danny garcia all his success at 140 amir khan all their success at 140 that doesn't automatically give you a, a ticket or a pass to being successful at 147. That's a whole different division, right? And you put Amir Khan, I mean, he didn't really fight like an Earl Spence or Keith Thurman or Porter. He just went straight up and fought Canelo at Canelo weight. But you put those guys, Danny Garcia and Amir Khan, despite how good they were at 140, you put them in with big welterweights, it might be a different ball game, right? So clearly, this will be the probably biggest, strongest, guy that jesse vargas has fought you you look at the video i did a, a little while ago and read the comments a lot of people aren't even giving jesse vargas a chance so to connect the dots with what i'm trying to say is yes it's a unification it's not a bad fight i'm not gonna shit on the jesse vargas kill brook fight but to me even though vargas is a champion you gotta say earl spence jr based on how he's being toted and and praised and he's actually undefeated it's probably equivalent to Jesse Vargas who just won a vacant belt and doesn't have as much experience at at welterweight. You know what I'm saying? Go look at the comments on my video. A lot of people weren't giving Jesse Vargas a chance against Kell Brook. Some people maybe, but I didn't see a lot of people doing that. And Earl Spence Jr. versus Kell Brook is clearly a 50-50 fight. So back to what Eddie Hearn was saying, it just sounded fishy. It, did, it sounded like they basically turned down the fight and they would rather pursue a fight with Jesse Vargas because they can easily pass it for a unification. And also, Jesse Vargas is not, like I've been saying, he's not as experienced at welterweight. Whether Earl Spence Jr. has a resume or not, he's almost a mandatory. And he fought at 52 in the amateurs. I just talked to him last weekend and interviewed him. Make sure you check those interviews. And he was fighting at... 150 plus pounds in the amateurs and now he's fighting at welterweight so all of his fights have really been at welterweight can't say the same for jesse vargas so when it comes to full-fledged welterweights clearly earl spence is that and he has an olympic background unlike jesse vargas i don't think he went to the olympics things like that so even though it's a unification you got to look at it it's a unification with a guy who hasn't defended he's just going straight away to unify which you know what i mean shows the the cojones on Jesse Vargas like it, it reminds me of David Lemieux versus Triple G David Lemieux is a solid fighter but he had just fought for a vacant belt against Hassan Indom and he beat Hassan Indom took him the distance beat him knocked him down four times I think it was and then straight away he went in versus an undefeated powerful guy in Gennady Golovkin we've seen what happened in that particular fight so it, it doesn't it doesn't prove as much you know what I mean I I, I would like to have seen Jesse Vargas do a little bit more at welterweight before unification. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about a unification. It is what it is. But I'm just saying, to me, I would give Jesse Vargas a better chance if I seen him do a little bit more at welterweight because the couple times he fought at welterweight, they weren't necessarily the best performances. Saddam Ali looked good, and then versus Timothy Bradley, he lost every round except for the twelfth round in my book. He wasn't winning that fight. You know what I'm saying? So going in with a, a monster like Kell Brook, one of the division's top three guys, I would say, if you're not including Pacquiao and Mayweather, it's a tall order. So basically, from this Eddie Hearn interview, it sounds like they didn't want the Earl Spence Jr. They would rather a Jesse Vargas particular fight. And then it sounds like they're trying to throw it on Earl Spence Jr. Because again, I talked to him and it's not consistent with, I, I know some people sometimes say stuff and behind closed doors or something else. But I looked this man in the eye, I looked Earl Spence Jr. in the eye, I'm talking to him, and he said he wanted to fight Kell Brook, he wanted to fight this person, that person. He even said it post-fight after he stomped Chris Algieri. So you mean to tell me Al Heyman's guy 
really got on the phone after he destroyed Chris Algieri, which Pacquiao and Amir Khan and Ruslan Provotnikov didn't do. And Al Heyman's guy, whoever this guy is, who is negotiating with Eddie Hearn, all of a sudden, he doesn't have confidence that, that the fight is ready and it needs to be primed and needs to be marinated. Even though Earl Spence literally called Kell Brook out multiple times, and especially after the fight with Chris Algieri, it doesn't make sense. It just, what Eddie Hearn is pushing does not make sense. And again, saying, oh, they called back 10 days later, said he'll take the fight. But you, you haven't even wrapped up, fully wrapped up the Jesse Vargas fight. So there's still an option. And, if, and, and the funny thing is this, you look at, people always make it sound like, if, if I do a poll and says, who would you rather see Kell Brook fight? Jesse Vargas in a unification or Earl Spence Jr., the undefeated powerhouse and, and the the body snatcher, the new body snatcher. I guarantee you the bulk of boxing fans would rather see, even though it's not a unification, it's someone who's right on the tip of becoming uh, mandatory. And I think it, it's a fight where more people would probably say it's a 50-50 fight. Because again, you, you I've talked to tons of people in boxing. A lot of people say Jesse Vargas is tough. He has heart and stuff like that. But most people are favoring Kell Brook. If he went in there with Earl Spence, I think it would be pretty split who people decided. And in closing, this is what I got to say. To say that a fight with Spence needs marinating and, and this is not the right fight right now. It just didn't make sense what he was saying. You, you got to look at what Eddie Hearn was saying. Eddie Hearn said in this particular interview, he said that, oh, let's say hypothetically we offer Earl Spence Jr. a million dollars. His advisor is going to say, oh, he's not going to take that. He's not going to take that risk and come to the UK for a million dollars. One, why does Kilbrook have to fight in the UK? You know what I mean? That's one thing. He already fought Sean Porter. If it's a meaningful fight and you can get it done in the U.S., then get it done in the U.S. But even even still, even if it is to happen in the U.K., how do you know that Heyman's people would ex a million dollars? You look at Earl Spence Jr.'s last salary versus Chris Algieri, he only got 225000 Chris Algieri, who wasn't the favorite, got more money than Earl Spence Jr. Chris Algieri got like hundred k more. He got like 325000 dollars right so how can you say to me that it's like you're, you're trying to think for his side you can't say oh he's not going to take a million dollars to come to the uk for a million dollars when he called the man out post fight and he only got two hundred and twenty five thousand in his last fight versus chris algeri how you gonna say for you know what i mean 750 800 thousand more he won't come to the uk in a meaningful fight to fight a guy who is also undefeated that doesn't even make sense. He's he's an Olympian. Olympians, I mean, if you're in the Olympics, you, you know about, and you're a fighter, you know about traveling. You have to go to different countries and fight people from other countries. He's he's has an amateur background. So what do you mean he won't come to the UK for a milli? That's not what he told me. That's all I'm going to say. So it just doesn't sound consistent. It sounds like Eddie Hearn, he was the advisor who thought it's in his best interest to match Kell Brook with a unification because again anytime I can't I can't complain about unifications but when you strip it down and you, you boil it down he's unifying with not a proven welterweight champion you know what I mean you put Jesse Vargas in there in a rematch with Timothy Bradley there's no guarantee that Vargas would beat him the second time even as champion you put him in there with Pacquiao there's no chance or there's no there's nothing saying that he would beat could even beat a Pacquiao or any of the top level welterweights you know what I mean Jesse Vargas versus Keith Thurman, Sean Porter. I mean, who would you favor Jesse Vargas to beat out of the top welterweights? You know what I'm saying? So it, it sounds like Eddie Hearn just likes the, the patsy of this is a unification fight, so I could easily sell it as that. And this is the best fight that Kell Brook has had in quite some time, probably since Sean Porter. And that's the other thing when it comes to these promoters. You guys got to read between the lines. You got to look at it. You look at it, and the fact of the matter is, Kell Brook is one of my favorite. I go to my channel you, you'll find a bunch of Kell Brook I was telling people about him I picked him to beat Sean Porter before he beat Sean Porter and people said go look at the prediction video it's still up and people were saying oh you're crazy Sean Porter's gonna run through him who is Kell Brook book fight he fought a UK bums and, and things like that and I picked him and I was right and so this is not a I hate Kell Brook thing it's a, I'm a realist thing right 
And the bottom line is, I like Kell Brook, but facts are facts. Since Sean Porter, he has regressed. His level of competition, okay, one or two of them, you could say were mandatories. But really, one of them was a mandatory. The first one, JoJo Dan off of a leg stabbing injury. So I gave that a pass. Then you fought, um, who, I don't even remember all these guys' names because it's not even real. He fought Kevin Bezier last. And before that, he fought, he fought somebody in between JoJo Dan. I forgot. See, I don't even remember the guy's name off the top of my head right now. But I'll put it in the video if I can remember. Bottom line is that second fight didn't need to happen. Kevin Bezier, you were supposed to fight Diego Chavez and allegedly got injured. And then Kevin Bezier, who lost twice to Jojo Dan, a guy you had already stopped, right? That became your mandatory because you were conveniently injured. You know what I mean? So bottom line, he hasn't, Kill Brook hasn't been stepping on the gas with his level of competition since he's become a champion. So that's the other thing. And the final thing I'll say in closing is when you really break it down, what Eddie Hearn is saying, like, I don't want to hear this. Oh, this is not a big fight or the advisor has to talk about the right time because it wasn't the right time for Kill Brook's last three fights. His last good fight on paper was where he had a chance of losing, where most people said, oh, it's a 50-50 fight was against Sean Porter. And that was a couple years ago at this point. You know what I mean? Sean Porter is going in there with Adrian Broner already since then. He fought Eric Bonet immediately after the Kelbrook loss. He's going in there with Keith Thurman. That shows you what he's about. Like shows you his pedigree. But Kel Brook, he's a great fighter. He's a strong fighter. I feel he's one of the top welterweights. But since Sean Porter, he has not fought anyone in the caliber or even in the echelon of a Sean Porter level guy. You know what I mean? A known elite guy, a known guy where you would say this is a 50-50 fight. So I don't want to hear Earl Spence is not primed and it needs to marinate. It's marinated now because it's better than Kell Brook's last three opponents. So what are you talking about? And it's, it reminds me of Triple G and the Canelo situation. Canelo like, oh, who is he beat? But he wants to fight you. Just like Pauli Malignaggi said when I interviewed him. You can't say, oh, oh, he ain't beat nobody. He ain't fought nobody when he's trying to fight you. Of course he ain't fought no one because you're not trying to fight him. So... It's, it's like, it reminds me of this. I'm going to give you guys this last analogy and I'm out. When I turned 18, I had absolutely no credit. No credit history at all. I was trying to build credit. So I went into like Target, applied for a credit card, denied. We'll send you a letter in the mail. Then I went to Macy's, tried to get a store card, denied. And we'll send you a letter in the mail. So I wait, I wait. I'm like, damn, why am I getting, I have no, it's like, I thought in my mind, like I'm, I got perfect credit. I had no credit history. So what's the problem? But then later in life, I worked at a credit card company. I used to work at this company called Providian at a call center. And I understand it more. When you're dealing with credit lenders, what they do is they look at a particular person and assess their risk. If we, it's a credit is basically like a loan. If we have someone and give them a thousand dollar credit limit, Will we get our money back? Will we constantly have to search for our money? You know what I mean? They're, they're just like um, like loan sharks. You know what I mean? They loan you the money and they want to know how hard it's going to be for them. Do we trust them? How high of a risk are they? So people with bankruptcies, people with uh, closed credit cards and stuff because they defaulted on their payment. Those are considered very high risk customers. So when you're new to the credit game, and you have no credit history, they don't know what type of risk you are, right? They don't know if you're a huge risk, they don't know if you're responsible, they don't know if you're gonna pay a month in advance and be punctual, they don't know. So that's why they deny you, because it says you have insufficient credit history, right? So let me tie this together for you guys. The reason I brought that up is I was getting denied when I was 18 because I had no credit history. And everybody was saying, we won't approve you. We can't approve you at this time because you have no credit history. That's all it would say. Not because you had bad credit or because you filed a bankruptcy or anything. It's because you have no credit history. So the point being is I couldn't get a credit card because they didn't know who I was and nobody would give me a chance. Look at Earl Spence Jr. You can easily always say he ain't fought nobody if the top level welterweights get called out and they never try to fight him you can always put him oh he ain't beat nobody he ain't beat nobody you know what i'm saying same thing with golovkin at middleweight 
You, know, you look at a lot of the middleweights don't want to fight him. So it's a it's a way to pigeonhole you in that. You know what I mean? You, oh, he Earl Spence, he ain't fought nobody. But he's trying to fight people. I talked to him. He really is. I looked in his eye. When I talk to people, I look a man in his eyes. Pause. And he really wants to fight these people. From what it sounds like. I mean, I, there was no indication that he was lying. So back to the credit history analogy. That's what it is. You can always say, oh, who's he be? Oh, he, he only fought Algeri. He ain't fought nobody. But he's trying to fight you. And again, this would clearly be better than any of Kell Brook's opponents since Sean Porter. And I personally believe, this is ego speaking, I personally believe that if he were to fight Earl Spence Jr., it would be a more meaningful fight, even though Jesse Vargas is currently a champion. And the only reason is because he's not a proven champion. Like It's not like he went in there with Keith Thurman and took Keith Thurman's belt. It's not like he rematched Bradley and took the belt from him. He fought for a vacant belt and he hasn't defended. So it could be a good, scrappy, tough fight, clearly favoring Kell Brook. Kell Brook versus Earl Spence Jr., I don't know who the hell would win. That's a good fight. So even though Jesse Vargas is a champion now, and you can sell it at that, and no one could really bash it for that reason, I still believe, based on the skill set and the styles of the two fighters, Kell Brook and Earl Spence Jr., that is a more meaningful fight. Because as far as I'm concerned, I think Earl Spence's amateur background, how great he looked against Chris Algieri, things of that sort, and his style and his size. Both Kell Brook and Earl Spence are big. Like I told you earlier in this video, Earl Spence competed at over 150 pounds in the amateurs, and Kell Brook is clearly big as well. So it's still more meaningful. Jesse Vargas, to me, is more of a career 140 pounder who recently moved up and maybe is coming into his man strength of developing his power a little bit more. He's a good fighter, he's a solid fighter, but most people are clearly favoring Kell Brook from what I've seen. So let me know what you guys think of Eddie Hearn and what he had to say about why that particular fight didn't happen. It sounds like they chose to fight a champion, which you can't condemn, but we all know what time it is. The reason is because I think Earl Spence Jr. is viewed as the bigger threat between Jesse Vargas and Kell Brook. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego Sun and all. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.